Please be seated. Good afternoon to everyone assembled, our successful graduates, the families and friends who have loved and supported you, and the faculty and staff who have taught and mentored you. It is my great honor as Dean of the Antonin Scalia Law School at George Mason University to welcome you to the celebration and commencement of the great law class of 2024. Please now rise for our national anthem to be sung by Sarah Barker, a member of our own JD class of 2024. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's Thank you, Sarah. Please again be seated. This afternoon, the Scalia Law School will graduate three groups of master's students, internationally trained LLMs, U.S. trained LLMs with a subject matter expertise, and Juris Master or JM students. Some students study with us on this campus, while others have joined us from around the world and around our country online. Our graduate LLM and JM students now comprise more than 40% of the Scalia Law School enrollments. Our students represent more than 95 countries and collectively you speak 100 languages. Our students range in age from their early 20s to their late 50s and each of you bring a wealth of experiences and different perspectives on the law to share with us. Whatever your journey has been before the Scalia Law School and whatever it will be after this afternoon, we are proud to support you. Today is a celebration of all that you have achieved. You are now officially part of the law school family of Scalia and we count you as our distinguished alumni. Before we proceed, I want to recognize the outstanding law school faculty and staff, including our assistant and associate deans, who are seated on the stage and in the audience, too plentiful to fit on the stage. As I think you know, the Scalia Law faculty is now ranked among the top 25 faculties in the country. Platform party. You, you beat me to it. Platform party and faculty and staff, please stand and we will applaud you again.
Thank you. Uh, when you put together a, a ceremony like this, there are many people to thank. We do want to thank all of the law school staff and Arlington events who helped us. Uh, but I do want to do a special uh, shout out to Dave Hull, who has done a great job uh, putting together today's ceremony. So Dave, we appreciate you. Uh, it's our tradition at the law school to have student speakers and to allow the students to elect their own peers to speak. So we'll start with our Juris Master class speaker, Nicholas James Weston. Will you please come forward? Thank you, Dean Randall, faculty and staff, friends and family, class of 2024. Congratulations. By your grit, determination, a lot of caffeine, and a little bit of help from ChatGPT, you have achieved a great accomplishment that nobody can ever take away from you. Now, I remember one thing from my very first class here at Scalia Law. The professor was introducing himself, and I'm going to leave out his name just in case he's here with us today. He was introducing himself, and he shared that he teaches classes for, all, for every program here at Scalia Law, and he thoroughly enjoys it. But he especially enjoys teaching the JM and the LLM students, because unlike many of the JD students, the JM and the LLM students are real people with real lives and experiences outside of school. And let me tell you, since I've been here, I have gotten to meet many real people. Many of you here today who have inspired me to be a better student and to be a better person. Many of you, since coming to Scalia Law, I have heard one word used repeatedly to describe America today. I've heard it said in the halls of Congress, and I've heard it right next door in Hazel Hall. And that word is broken. And the truth is, America has always been broken. Now let me be clear. I am proud of this country, and I am proud of how far our nation has come, but I'm inspired by how much further we can go. In my personal life, I have made many mistakes many of which could have easily taken a turn for the worse. But thanks to the never-ending support of my mom and my grandparents and my loving and amazing wife, Devin, and most of all, because of the unconditional love and forgiveness of God, I am able to stand here with you today. And I know each of you have a unique story like that. And the truth is, the mistakes of our past do not determine who we are today nor who will be in the future. Now, in front of me, I see determination and resilience and the audacity to chase your dreams that has gotten you to where you are today. And that's where the American dream lives. Not on TV, not on Capitol Hill, certainly not on our social media feeds. No, you are the ambassadors of what make this country great, and you get to determine what our nation will be in the future. It is our duty to show the world, as well as our leaders on the other side of the Potomac, that America may be broken, but we've got a bright future ahead of us with the class of 2024 leading the way. Today is a well-earned celebration, but the hard road doesn't end here. Now you're going to continue to fight the good fight, to finish the race, and to keep the faith, because that's who you are. And never forget that we always have hope, we can do hard things, and we are loved by a God who's overcome this broken world. Congratulations, class of 2024. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate your remarks. And then secondly, Sophia Martina Bastidas will represent the LLM students. Thank you so much, Dean, faculty, and especially my classmates and family who support us. It's an honor for me to give this speech and be the voice of my classmates, classmates who are talented, strong, and hardworking people 
So be their voice is a truly honor for me. Today, we gather to celebrate the end of the LLM, but also to celebrate our sacrifice, effort, and bravery. In returning to studies while balancing work, family, and adapting to a new country. I represent the students who come from all over the world, and to me, that's precious. Before coming here, we all worked hard for several years to become lawyers in our countries. A lot of years of effort, money, cry, happiness. And one day, we decided to quit all of that, to move to the US and start a new life, just to follow our dream to become a lawyer in the US. Being here today is a huge symbol of all our work and our dream. It's not easy to give up everything for a dream. It's not easy to leave our homes and become foreign concerned about our visa, about if we are gonna be able to work. But we are here, we try, we're fighting, we're fighters. We all have moments of questioning ourselves and our decisions. I sometimes wonder myself why I'm starting from scratch when I already have a good life in my country. And that's because I have a big dream. We all have a big dream. We all have people who believe in us, and we are here. We are capable, and here we are today celebrating that we were able to study in another language, in another country, and in that process, we have built a very beautiful international community. Where regardless of our cultures and origins, we support each other and we grow together. Our differences, instead of separating us, have united even us, have united us even more. My accent, I'm proud of my accent, we should all be proud of our accent. <laughs> I wish I could name each of you, each of my classmates, because I admire you, I respect you, and I'm extremely grateful because I have this splendid year with you. Let's continue moving forward together. Let's continue building a more just and diverse professional community. Let's keep dreaming, because today we're here, because one day each of us have a big dream in our countries. Even the smallest dream can turn into a big thing or a small dream put us here today. I wish you luck and success on the journey ahead of you. Whenever doubts discourage you, remember this moment. Remember the nervous, the happiness, the pride. You sending pictures with this funny looking robe to your family and your friends. You look beautiful and you're surrounded by your loved ones, celebrating that you were able to overcome a big challenge. Each of you is a universe of dreams, hope, and people who love you. Some of them are here, some of them are watching us on Zoom. Trust yourself and lean on those who love you the most to keep moving forward and achieving goals. You are pride to your families and to the legal profession. Finally, and I hope that you don't mind, I want to say a few words in Spanish because my mom doesn't speak this language. So I just want to say to my mom, Mamá, no te veo, pero... Estoy extremadamente orgullosa de ti y espero que tú estés al menos la mitad orgullosa de mí de lo que yo estoy de ti. Hoy estoy aquí gracias a tu esfuerzo, a tu sacrificio y a los valores que me has enseñado. Te quiero muchísimo y cada uno de mis éxitos está dedicado a ti. Y te estoy viendo llorar, no llores. I also want to say thank you to my father who also worked so hard for me. And I want to thank you to my partner for his tireless support, even my moments of frustration, even when I become impossible, he's still there remind me that I can't. To my friends and to you, we already have done part of the journey. We can achieve the other part. We are here. Just remember that we are here. And being here seemed impossible just a few years ago. Thank you to everyone who trusts us and giving us an opportunity for us we just need a small opportunity to show you that we can do it, that we deserve that opportunity. Our accent is just a proof that we're fighters, that we're brave. Thank you a thousand times. Thank you today and always. Sophia, thank you for your remarks. Wonderful, wonderful.
I'd now like to introduce Sean Sutherell, our Associate Dean for Strategic Initiatives. Sean joined the law school in March 2021 and was charged with developing and expanding our graduate programs. Sean and Brian Benison and their colleagues have provided great leadership, which we see represented today by our graduates. Sean will introduce our faculty speaker. Thank you, Dean Randall. Good afternoon. I'm privileged to introduce our faculty speaker to you, many of you which, uh, many of you here have taken her courses. Um, this year, we are proud to have adjunct professor of law, Naina Deal. Professor Deal joined the law school more than three years ago. She teaches legal research and writing and government contracts to our students across several of our graduate programs. Professor Deal holds a JD from the University of the Philippines and an LLM from American University. She's an expert in go government contracts, working for several large federal contractors. Professor Deal currently serves as Vice President and Deputy General Counsel at CACI International. Please join me in welcoming Professor Deal to the podium. Thanks, Sean, and I am so proud. Both of the student speakers were my students, and I am so happy to see them on the stage and hear from them today. Esteemed faculty, proud families and friends, and most importantly, the 2024 graduates of George Mason University Scalia Law School's graduate programs, thank you for allowing me to participate in this incredible recognition of your success. This is a pivotal moment. It is the culmination of long, sometimes lonely hours spent grappling with new ideas and overcoming difficult challenges. But despite that, remaining steadfastly committed to the idea that the world can be improved through intentional and well-reasoned scholarship. Each of you arrived at Scalia Law with a purpose driven to better yourselves, the communities you represent, and the professions you have chosen. But as you prepare to embark on a new journey, I imagine you also leave with something more, a better understanding, perhaps, of the patterns woven by law and policy, a deeper appreciation of the social and economic impact of legislation and jurisprudence, and a real desire to advocate for the type of justice that promotes a more civil and equitable society. This moment is not just a celebration of your academic achievements, it is a celebration of your very real power to shape the future. Your time at Scalia Law has equipped you with the tools to do this. Here, you have honed your ability to think critically argue effectively, and empathize profoundly. These tools are yours to use, not just in the courtroom or the boardroom, but in building the very fabric of our collective, global, and shared society. As you step forward, remember Justice Scalia's legacy. Regardless of where you stand on the spectrum of ideologies, one cannot help but admire his unswerving belief in the role of the Constitution as the bedrock of this country's democracy. This was a belief that he held closely and ferociously, even in the wake of criticism and doubt. And like him, you are called to be fearless in your convictions, dedicated to your truth. The world that churns outside these halls is fraught with challenges and complexities, issues of justice, equity, and humanity that clamor for attention, demand resolution. Your education places you in a unique position to be promoters of change, champions of democratic principles, leaders in the society you will inevitably build. Whether you choose to serve in public office or pursue corporate roles work in private practice, I ask that you carry forward this spirit of service and integrity. 
even though this may at times weigh heavily on your shoulders, even when the burden of doing the next right thing may sometimes seem too much to bear. To the families and friends who have supported these graduates, know that your encouragement and sacrifice have been indispensable to their success. It is because they stood on your shoulders that they are now able to face forward and achieve greater things. This is a debt that can never be repaid. And to the graduates, as you step forward towards what lies ahead, let your actions be guided by the principles of justice, fairness, and compassion. This is not an end, but the first of many more steps on a journey that has already begun to evolve. Go forth with courage and purpose, be bearers of change when called upon to do so, and be steadfast advocates of integrity and truth. On behalf of the faculty who sit before you here today, I thank you for allowing us to walk with you. We cannot wait to see how far you'll go. Congratulations, class of 2024. Thank you, Professor Deal. Wonderful insights and inspiration for everyone. Uh, it's now time for our keynote address, and our commencement speaker is Ms. Sandra Castaneda. Ms. Castaneda is an alumna of this law school, having earned her LLM in 2021 after immigrating to the United States in 2019. She is an accomplished attorney with over a decade of experience practicing both in Columbia and in the United States. After passing the Washington, D.C. bar exam, Ms. Castaneda joined Marriott International 2020, in 2023, where she currently serves as Vice President and Corporate Counsel. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker. Looking at all of you today reminds me of my graduation day three years ago. I was standing on the line with the U.S. Law LLMs waiting to be seated, and a group of graduates were talking. One of them was very excited because he had already passed the New York Bar exam, and he already had secured, had secured a job as an attorney in a prestigious law firm. And I thought about how lucky he was. His circumstances seemed so far away from me even though we were graduating at the same time. To give you some context at the time, I didn't have a job. I hadn't passed the bar. I even hadn't passed the MPRE. I had a long journey ahead. I tell you this because I empathize on how you feel today. As a US law master graduate, you may not see this day as a finish line, but as the start of a long, long process. First, passing the bar is not easy and requires a lot of work. My only recommendation is that you follow every piece of advice that the school gives you during your bar prep. I know may, it may be overwhelming, but there is no magic secret to passing it. The only way is to study hard and commit to it. Then, if you're seeking work as an attorney, my advice is not to be picky and to take any position that gives you legal experience in the United States. If you haven't already, and leverage on what you are already good at. To put things in perspective, I have more than 10 years of professional experience as, as, an, as a transactional attorney in Colombia. And I found that all those years don't count unless you have already legal experience in this country. So before passing the bar, I accepted an offer as a paralegal in a family law firm. And let me tell you something. Family law sucks. <laughs> Sorry. After passing the bar and applying to every position, especially positions that, that have nothing to do with family law, I received two offers. An online position as a transactional attorney for a German pharmaceutical company and a hybrid non-lawyer position as a contract specialist at Park Hotels and Resorts. I accepted the non-lawyer position at Park because 
In addition to being an attorney, my passion lies in the hospitality industry. During my time in Colombia, I was an in-house attorney for a hotel change. Park Hotels is a real estate investment trust owning properties where major hotel change operate, so it seemed like a logical fit. Additionally, I would rather have in-person experience. That way, I could gain the exposure and the networking I was missing. After accepting the offer, I found that I had other challenges to overcome. As you can tell by my accent, English is not my first language. Some people may think less of you professionally when you speak with an accent, especially if you're trying to show your value as an attorney. Once I started working, I discovered that local attorneys could find it challenging to address international lawyers as colleagues, particularly given how competitive the legal profession is in this country. If there is something I would like you to take from my story is this. The fact that you speak with an accent or the fact that you have a different background doesn't make you less of a professional. Quite the opposite, own it. Our different backgrounds and assets, not, not a disadvantage. I can assure you, you will have moments of uncertainty. You will make difficult decisions, and maybe you will accept jobs where you don't feel valued. But all of that, that is a necessary part of the process. My advice is that if you find yourself in a place where you don't feel appreciated, take advantage of what you can learn from it and move on. Don't be afraid of change. Experience has taught me that we live in a country that rewards talent. I can attest to that in my current job at Marriott. In Marriott, I discovered that a company that embraces diversity is much more successful and satisfying to work for. I'm very grateful because I found a place where I have my supervisors fully support, where I can use my skills and follow my passions. One last piece of advice. Use the resources that George Mason has in place for you. Follow your professors on LinkedIn. Take advantage of the network you're building. The school is always open to helping students. George Mason's professors can be great mentors. Mine is Professor Zaguato from my business associations class, to whom I own many, many of my accomplishments. Finally, please give yourself a round of applause. You made it. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Castaneda. We appreciate your advice. As she told you, everything will be fine if you just all listen to your dean. <laughs> That's what I heard. Uh, we've now come to the part of the program that you've especially been waiting for, so let me ask all of our graduates, please stand. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Visitors of George Mason University, and as recommended and approved by the Antonin Scalia Law School faculty, I confer upon our graduates the Juris Master and Master of Laws degrees with all of their rights, responsibilities, privileges, and duties. So you now can move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations to you. You can now be seated. I'm going to ask to come to the podium Brian Benison, who will assist with the presentation of diplomas. And our marshals, will you please present our class of 2024 to us? Our first uh, students will be from our Juris Master's program. Nicholas Weston.
Sofia Martinez Bastidas. Gabrielle Allen. Tamana Atai. Cody Cratrice Bridges. Jessica Goril. Oriolua Joda. Anthony Dennis Lopez. Lesla Marquez. Mawada Saeed Ahmed. Money Sai. Next, I'll present our LLM in Cyber Intelligence and National Security, Lucas Park. Next, our Global Antitrust Law and Economics LLM, Michael Andrew Granville Archer. Aniye Bolurian. Matt Redston. Redison. Dr. Patrali Banerjee. Pranali Sunil Rawade. Now we will be presenting our LLM in U.S. law, Mohammed Abaidullah, <laughs> Dr. Kevork Hagopjian, <laughs> Jada John Aksoy. <laughs> Nora. Abdulrahman Al Shakawi. <laughs> Ranim Aladel. <laughs> Jarmin Akter. <laughs> Elena Alexandrian. Gladys Arthur. John Patrick Atwood. Najibula Ezad. Le Bang. Camille Barrett. <laughs> Mason O. Inko Taria. <laughs> Anna Katita. Felix Limon Kudal Jr. Amandeep Dillon.
Michaela Doyle. Karine Elbatut. Paulo Vitor Ferreira de Lima. Orjita Gokalye. Andre Vladimir Gonzalez Arteaga. Jonelle Farah Hermit. Alexander Sinjin Hopkins. Amira Ismail. Rayrock Kakar. Dr. Darius Kamgang Kamgang. Armand Cachioso. Dilbar Kamilova. Olga Kassian. Michael Houston Lovitz. Ayana Mauega. Daniel Robert Manrique. Andrea Martinez. Martinez. Kealani Makari. Jessica Luis Kealani Makari. Maria Eduarda McCall. Mary Mugo Spagnoli. Andrea Naranjo. Leonardo Nina. Renata. Nobrega Hosha. Dina Natalia Prophet. Anusha Kasim Amir. Sherry Shalabi. Zaur Gurbanli. <laughs> Dalia Shamat. <laughs> Lundaloza Longizi Sibanda. Yarnil Singh.
Kimberly Smith. Unes Ejem Tarakche. Bianca Trevejan de Jesus. Francisco Teo Torres. William Vacek. Madeline Vargas. Isabel Wald Ortega. Kwangjin Wang. Joy Wona. Wansik Yu. Diana Yusupov. <laughs> Anibal Rafael Zareta. Let's give a round of applause to the class of 2024. Well, this has been a great afternoon. Uh, after our ceremony, we have champagne for you and refreshments in the Hazel Hall Auditorium. Uh, we will now do our recessional in the same order that we uh, came in. Uh, graduates, please stand or remain standing until the platform party exits, and uh, audience, please let our graduates exit first. We are adjourned. Thank you.